What do you say we get back to the window grill project and make some scrolls, or at least make one scroll to see how the project goes and make sure it's going to fit and look the way we want it to look. So how do we calculate the distance for the scroll? We've drawn a scroll that isn't too bad. I think I can forge one better than I can draw one. But this gives us an idea how much material. But we have to measure all these curves. And that's hard to do by just sticking a tape measure up there. So let me show you how we do that. This is really as simple as a piece of string. And you start off putting the end right on the scroll and just laying the string along the center line of the scroll, not the inside edge or the outside edge. And as you move it's okay if the string falls down as long as you don't lose your position here. I've heard of some people using a copper wire because it'll hold its shape better. And that's okay too. You just keep working this around until you've gone around the entire scroll. And of course this is much easier if this piece is laying flat, but that's a much harder angle for me to get the camera onto. So. And it pays to do this a couple of times just in case you're off and taking, hopefully you get the, the same measurement every time, but if not, you can take an average. And then we're going to make a scroll and we're going to see if we were close. So there's my length right there. And don't let go of this, you need to know where that is. Now without stretching the string, you don't want to pull tight because you might have stretch, although this piece of string I used it really doesn't. You can measure it. And I end up with 34 and a quarter inches. My first measurement was 34. So both of those are probably just about right. And that's what we want to make our overall scroll length, that length. But that is not what we want to cut our bar. On this so-called wrought iron, stuff that has no wrought iron in it and really hasn't been wrought or hammered in any way at all, it's all just cut and fabricated. One of the things that makes it so ugly in my eyes is the way the scrolls are done. It's one got a little straight section here where it was clamped in a jig and bent around and nothing's been done with this and it's just cut off square. There's nothing fancy done with this. Blacksmiths have the advantage that they can make this a nice elegant transition and there are lots of varieties. For this I'm just going to do what's called a ribbon scroll and it's just a simple two-dimensional taper. But there's lots of other things, and as we get more into scrolls, we will look at a lot of the other versions of scrolls. Haypenny scrolls, stub in scrolls, bolt in scrolls, ribbon scrolls, split scrolls, branch scrolls. Lots of things you can do with a scroll. But if you're a blacksmith and you're forging, do something with it besides just chop it off square. That's the least elegant, the least attractive, and really shows you didn't take the time to forge your scroll. So what are we going to do? They said we're going to make a ribbon scroll and that's just a simple flat taper, two dimension. It's going to be the same width as the bar. I'm starting off with quarter by half inch bar and I'm going to draw this out. You can take about an inch of it and draw it out to about two inches long on the end. So I need an an inch less on each end or 32 inches, 34 inch overall when I'm done, 32 inches for now. This is another good place for one of our hook rules. We know we want 34 inches when we're done, so we might as well mark 34 inches on a hook rule. And now I know that that's the mark I need to go to after I've drawn out my ends. And I'll draw both ends out before I do anything else to make sure I get the exact length for the bar. And we're just going to do one to test it. If this doesn't come out right, we'll figure out too long, too short, what do we need to do. And we'll do another scroll and see if we can get it right. So let's go to the fire. First thing we're going to do is heat up the end. Take one inch of this, draw it out to two inches in a flat taper. Since I only want to take an inch 
of this bar to draw out my taper. I'm just going to mark that inch so I know where to start and I can measure right off the anvil. So I know I want to start with about a one inch section of this. Again, we're going to keep it half inch wide and draw it out right to a point in the other dimension. And we want that to occur over a two inch period. And that's a little arbitrary, that's just what I decided to do. If I don't like the way it looks, I can change it. That's sort of what we're going for. And that's occurring over about an inch and three quarters, so I'm going to take just a little bit more material. This is really just a matter of cleaning it up and making it look good. And that, that'll probably result in the other inch. And I'm also going to let this round out naturally. Depending on the scroll, you may not want to do that, but I think that will add to the appearance on this scroll. And I'm going to lightly chamfer the edges just to get rid of any sharp edges. And that's all we need to do to that end. I'm going to cool that off. Yeah, I'm happy with that. And then we're going to turn it around and we're going to make sure that we end up with a 34 inch length for our measured length of the scroll. So I'll do this exact same taper on the other end. Make sure that you're not creating a step back here where you started. That isn't the purpose. You're just measuring off a, an amount of material. You want a smooth transition from parallel bar to the tapered bar. Okay, so that's got the right amount of material. take my hook ruler and see if I made 34 inches which is exactly what I'm at. So our measurements are all correct. So I'm going to start scrolling this in because it's hot and we're going to do the larger end of the scroll first. Now keep an eye on what your full size layout looks like and just start right over the edge of the anvil and start making a scroll that you think matches that layout. Now you can also start this over the scroll starter. I think this comes in handier for tighter scrolls, scrolls that have to un overlap here, and I don't know that this one's going to need it. But we covered the scroll starter, so if you've made one and you want to use it, go for it. It's just fine, but I usually just do these right at the edge of the anvil. You can kind of tighten this up here. If you hit too many times in exactly the same spot, you end up with a little kink. And kinks are what we're trying to avoid. I'm working upside down on this just because it's easier for me to get to this. But after every heat, or in the middle of a heat if you need to, check this. So from, from here out, my scroll is good. So that I need to start working from here back then. And again, I don't have to match this because this is a little squished and a little flat right through there. So I'm going to be okay if I make a better looking scroll by hand. Now if you could set that pattern right next to the anvil, that would probably be your best bet.
Now an even heat is important because a scroll will want to bend either where it's the thinnest, which is okay at the tip and if you have a nice even taper, but if you have hot spots it's going to bend more at the hot spots or resist bending at the cold spots as the case may be. I'm checking that drawing a lot more often than what you're seeing. I'm just not moving the camera every time so we will go back and we'll look at that again here in just a second. And At some point you'll probably need to go to the horn to work on this, although we're getting very close to it all we want for this first scroll. Now as I suspected we have come to a point where I like the scroll I'm forging way better than the scroll I, I drew. This is a much more even round shape so I think I'm going to continue with this. I'm going to work on rounding this up and we're just about at the point that we can make any adjustments with scroll forks on this larger end once I get this wrapped around. And then we'll turn it around and we'll do the other end. By working over the horn you've got a place you can let the scroll kind of hang under. And it's a little cold there. You can see I worked here. I'm starting to kink there because it transitions so I want to quit messing with that and get that hot if I'm going to work it anymore. You can also see that's getting out of alignment so make sure you keep it all in the same plane. back over to the drawing. Okay, I'm liking that scroll quite a bit. So the next thing I want to do is scroll up this other end and then I'll make any adjustments I need to bring everything in or stretch it or work on this curve in the middle or whatever and I'll do that probably cold right here on top of the drawing. So I'm going to let it cool and then we're going to work on that end. Now think about which way you want to curve this. If you curve it the same you end up with what's called a C scroll. If you curve it opposite it's an S scroll and that's what we want. Now I want these ends to look about the same so I can kind of compare the first one and look at it and then roll the end up a little bit more. I think this is rolling up a little tighter than my first one, so I may have to open it up just a little bit. So remember, you can almost never get back into here, although there are some tools that will help. Certainly our scrolling fork may help, but also a pair of scroll pliers, and this one's offset at 90 degrees so you can get in there. But not everybody has scrolling tongs or scrolling pliers, so you don't really have to have them. They're kind of a luxury item. And this scroll fork is probably is just a hair too big for this particular scroll. Which is why it's nice to have some options. Yeah, I think that looks more like the first side now. The best option though is to not mess it up in the first place. I've checked this with our drawing just like I was doing previously. The more of these you do, the better you will get at it. I'm going to go check that again. We're getting really close to what I think we want. All right. I take that back. We're not getting to what we want. I think we've hit exactly what we want. That fits our drawing very nicely. 
Somebody out there is saying, but wait, we didn't get to use all the tools we made. And I'm afraid that is absolutely true. I thought we would use some of the, uh, the scrolling forks and have to make some adjustments here. And you can use two top forks for doing that. If you need to make some, some tweaks and adjustments, you can work it this way. But I'm so happy with this, I'm not going to mess with it. It's not exactly the same. It's narrower here. It comes up a little higher right here. But I like this scroll way better than the drawing, and I knew that was going to be the case because I forge scrolls better than I draw them. So we're just going to go with this. While our scroll is cooling, I thought I'd talk about some of these other tools that I mentioned very briefly. Clearly, you don't need these. We did that scroll almost entirely by hand at the anvil with a hammer. We did use the horn of the anvil, so if you don't have a horn, you may need a horn substitute for something like that. You can also do a lot of scroll work with, with bending forks. You can do an entire scroll this way if you need to, very methodically. And for adjusting scrolls and making the final little tweaks to make everything fit, these are invaluable. I know you'll use them, so if you took the time to make them, don't worry. Just because I didn't show them very much on this project doesn't mean they aren't useful. And before we're done, we may end up using them more. And I'll explain that more in upcoming videos. So these other things, the scrolling tongs or scrolling pliers, can be real handy for making little adjustments on the insides of the scroll. And I've got them in different sizes, and they're just essentially big, heavy tongs with rounded ends that will fit inside the scroll and you can tweak and adjust. Some of them are available commercially and they're not scrolling tongs. I think they call these electrician pliers or just round nose pliers and you can find these various places. I think this little pair came from McMaster Car. This pair came from Blacksmith's Depot. And these are handy and they're useful but don't use them as a crutch. Use them to help refine things if things aren't going quite right. But try to do it by eye with a hammer and you will get better and better and better at it. So we have one scroll. I'm very happy with this one scroll. Problem is we need four scrolls. So it's back to the anvil. Make three more exactly like it. Exact same procedure. And that is the best way to get good at forging scrolls is to make the same scrolls over and over again and get them right. However, at some point, if you need bunches and bunches, you're doing a big railing or a big gate or something that's got 30 or 40 of these in there, that's not very efficient. And you're going to want what's called a scroll form. And that's something you can bend a scroll around and get the same scroll every time. To make a scroll form, we're going to actually do this in another video, but make your scroll first. Make the scroll you want first. Don't go to the wall and get a scroll form and then try and force the scroll. The scroll form makes into the project. Make the scroll first. If you have the scroll form and this fits it, great, use that scroll form. If not, either make a new scroll form that fits the scroll or adjust an old scroll form. And what we're going to do in the next video on this subject is make a new scroll form that fits this scroll. And then if need be, if these ends aren't really the same, and, they, and of course they're not, but they're close, I will adjust one end to make it the same as the other end. And that way we will have both ends the same. And I think our project will look better in the long run. But the scroll form is not hard to make, but make the scroll first. You need a scroll that you like before you start making the scroll form. Don't try to make the scroll form and then use it for the scrolls. Probably won't come out just right. So I hope that was a useful video for you. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we're going to do the scroll form next, and we'll talk about different finial ends for scrolls, hay penny scrolls, snub end scrolls, bolt scrolls, all that kind of stuff in future videos. In the meantime, watch a few more videos, then get out to the shop, challenge your imagination, work on new skills, try to make scrolls all by hand and by eye, but do stay safe, do wear your safety glasses, and we'll see you around for the next one.